Next, we have to talk about this. Of course, this is courtesy of TMZ. This is all over the timeline. I'm probably late on this. Rihanna and ASAP Rocky are pregnant with their first child. So congratulations to them. Congratulations to the decision order. Um, it's pretty wild to see so many people over the pandemic either break up, hook up, or get pregnant. There's been nothing else in between because I guess we've had nothing else to do but to, you know, stick near to the people that we love, which is even revealed that they're not for us, that they're definitely for us. Oh, that person's quite cool. You know what I mean, that's basically what's happened in this regard. Um, I have to, from just a visual standpoint, because I don't care about relationship too much, because again, because I'm a dude, getting onto that, oh, who is who, and I don't care. But in terms of just a visual standpoint, there's no denying they make a great couple. There's no denying that they complement each other really well in terms of them, you know, being obsessed with fashion and stunting and looking great whenever they walk out of their apartments. <clears throat> Can you just imagine how nice their apartments are in New York? Oof. Um, so they look amazing. And also, I like the fact that the pictures aren't convoluted. It's not overdone. One of the things that I hate and I think I've slowly started to come around to because you know it's not really my place to speak and who gives a shit what i have to say but for the longest time it used to really annoy me all these kind of gender reveal things and st just these weird announcements when it comes to pregnancy because for me it's like yeah this is a normal human thing you know women can get pregnant it's not like an achievement it, it's not an achievement it's not something to make into a ceremony it just didn't make any sense this new western thing where that just that getting pregnant was the big deal and it was made into a big thing and photo shoots it just seemed really tacky and lame but over the years again my heart has softened i've started to understand you know various women go through different complications some people can't give birth very easily or they can't get pregnant or they just go through different things in life and again it is a pretty marvelous and far out thing to have a literal human growing inside of you right Com you know conceptually it's hard to kind of get your head wrapped around it so that, of course go celebrate it but sometimes the overdone ones can get a little bit puke worthy especially considering th the bar is so high with the beyonce's and Nicki minaj's and whatever else out there who done really good ones right it's just so high that when you start to do them on your level it can just look a bit lame a little bit too try hard so i like that they've done this really I won't say gritty but this kind of everyday way of doing it right under a bridge somewhere in the middle of new york i don't know if that's brooklyn i don't know what neighborhood it is both looking amazing obviously Rihanna's outfit i think obviously trump's um asap rocky's she's got the vintage chanel one just looking great so that you could definitely say it's definitely amazing um it's funny to see people online especially boys bemoaning and crying and saying oh she got pregnant i can't believe she let me down or she you know she cheated on me it's like guy come on guy let's let's be real you know what i mean let's be real you you never had a shot you know what i mean if she if this girl was willing to dump the likes of drake chris brown before asap rocky and choosing because again i think a lot of people are saying oh they're shocked he's the one that got chose but still think she had options she had many options before him there was this billionaire guy from the middle east like she you know this is rihanna man her inbox is healthy so to go from that you know to, to let go of those two guys or to decide i'm not i'm not going to get with those guys and they maybe aren't long-term um, partners for various reasons and then decide to go to asap rocky this is goes to show that she has options she clearly you know they clearly have a connection that not many people really understand and again more power to them in it wish them nothing but the best uh but again I'm a, I'm a big fan of the shoot i think it's done very well um rihanna might have the most photogenic face that exists out there um she looks amazing in clothes that needs to be said also and she's probably had some of the best uh, pregnancy looks as well this entire time wearing loads of vetemar loads of balenciaga which is always boxy and covers up baby bumps so this whole time that she was gallivanting around new york taking great pictures it was clear that she was pregnant at that time so that's amazing to see and obviously a look back at you know their first sort of collaboration together fashion killer which was uh, absolutely amazing maybe the time that they kind of hooked up and you know got together for the first time maybe who knows um yeah love everything about it love everything about it i think it's going to be cool um evolution's coming you know little by little we kind of we kind of all grew up with i think yeah for the most part we all kind of grew up with rocky maybe not rihanna maybe more rocky more so so to see him go from being the guy that used to wear mighty healthy you no know, um what was that brand called? Not Mighty Healthy. What was that brand called? Mishka. Was it Mishka, right? To go from the guy wearing Mishka with ASAP Mob, jumping into crowds, fighting people, to go to that fake beef with Tyler, making up with Tyler, then becoming best friends with him, then evolving into what he is now, Iggy Azalea phase, Kylie Jen, Kendall, Kendall Jenner phase, then this. It's pretty cool. It's pretty sick, I'm not going to lie. I mean, he's kind of growing up in front of our eyes. So 
it's cool to see, but also it's another reminder of how old we're all getting when these people are getting together and deciding to make a family. It's pretty, pretty wild. So yeah, congrats to them. It looks great. It also got me onto thinking about the criticism that Asa Rocky got around his comments regarding Black Lives Matter because I think under some of the comments, again, I think Twitter's a bit, Twitter's good. Twitter's good for uh, for wasting time. I think if you want something, if you want um, if you want to enjoy content, hmm, yeah, I think if you want to enjoy content on the on the toilet or when you're bored on a train somewhere, I don't think. I think Twitter and TikTok are kind of one and two. Instagram is a bit shit overall, but I think the way the algorithm works and the feed works on both Twitter and TikTok make them really good places to have a bit of a time sink where you can waste hours and hours and hours just consuming content. So when the announcement happened, when the post went live of, you know, uh, Rihanna being pregnant, I was reading through the comments and there was loads of people talking about, oh yeah, uh, makes up Rocky's a colorist. He doesn't support Black Lives Matter. I was like, what? I don't remember any of this. So obviously I did a bit of a Google and this article from the Guardian came up five years old article that says ASAP Rocky criticizes Black Lives Matter, quote unquote bandwagon. And if you're looking at it at the time, it obviously was a bit insensitive considering what was going on. But now with hindsight, or now with hindsight, um, and since time has elapsed, his comments don't seem that crazy. They obviously were crazy at the time because people's emotions are red hot. But in terms of what we've seen so far and what's transpired, Black Lives Matter organization, you know, people that are running it, stealing loads of money, investing money to buy homes, like just being very shady people. It definitely goes to show that maybe standing or maybe speaking for yourself and actually having the courage or the conviction to stay, stand up and basically say something, especially if it's going to be something that's going to be deemed un not not unfashionable but you know it's not gonna be the thing that everyone wants to hear at the moment it's maybe a better thing in terms of you falling on the right side of history people say on the internet than just kind of going along with the chorus of whatever else is saying out there in social media because people just seem to kind of repeat the same thing just for the sake of it and this whole oh, he's a colorist on black lives matter stuff is just nonsense so we're just going to go through a few bits of it so it says here this is his comment so uh da -da -da. It's a record attempted to clear the air following a re-emergence of a controversial interview, but may have created far more problems than for himself. Earlier this week, a 2015 interview with Time Out New York resurfaced in which rap star appeared to be unconcerned about police violence in the African American. Oh, he said the following I don't want to talk about no fucking Ferguson and shit because I don't live over there. I live in fucking Soho and Beverly Hills. I can't relate. So, of course, saying you can't relate to people that look like you being beaten and brutalized by police is a bit wild but the sentiment does make sense because it's one one thing that i kind of have never really understood this kind of press or this desire for some people to step out and always comment on everything that they see especially stuff that they see concerning people that look like them because i think it's just a it definitely is a western thing where for whatever reason we think just because we share the same skin color that we have the shared experiences when that is could be that could be further from the truth especially in europe there are people in europe especially black people that look like myself who have absolutely nothing in common with me because they you know they decide to identify with another part of their community that they live in whether it's the indigenous white people or whatever it may be or just their upbringing is completely different so to suggest that we have a shared experience because we look like each other it's completely ridiculous um and it probably is for the best if sometimes if you don't know what you're talking about to just say i don't want to talk about it because i don't know what i'm talking about and i live over here then to step out and try and <clears throat> comment on the struggles of people living in poverty in africa in in parts of north america especially people of african um, descent and try and make some sort of eye-opening remark about it when you're legitimately in some soho flat somewhere surrounded by 17 caucasian women willing to suck you off it just isn't going to hit the same so you might as well just keep your mouth closed, lace up your Jeremy Scotts and keep it moving because why not? You've got nothing else to lend to the conversation. And usually in these occasions, especially when it comes to Ferguson, especially when it comes to George Floyd protests, the people that need to speak, the people who basically been put on this earth to, um, uh, who've been put on this earth to basically occupy those positions and be the lightning rod people need to see, be the leader, be the one that kind of sparks the conversation, rallies the troops, they're going to respond. They don't need you to pop up and take off your flipping Star Trek trucker hat and join in. They already got it sorted. They don't need more distraction. So it's probably for the best that you just stay out of it. But these days, people just want clout. They want 
they want to be part of the conversation they just want to take part just for the sake of taking part i remember when that whole black squares nonsense was happening a couple of people dm'd me on, on instagram and stuff and were like oh um i see you haven't posted anything i just want to find out what, what you think about this because i feel like i'm being pressured and you know i don't want to seem like i'm a seller is that or like i'm a coon or i was like what a coon because you're not posting a black fucking square on your social media profile that's gonna do what everyone that posted a black social a black square on their social media profile what's changed in the music industry what's any is anything different that's happened since then you have you know Neil Young flipping arguing or basically deciding to remove all these music from Spotify because he doesn't like what Joe Rogan says. The whites are fighting each other on that platform. Are we getting anything from it? There are many techno artists are taking their music off of it because they're not getting like what changed really? Nothing changed from that whole situation. So again, if if you're if something in you compels you to do something like that, go ahead and do it. But if you're just doing it to be a part of the conversation or because you feel like your skin colour didn't you know dictates how you move and what you say you've already lost because that's not going to be anything meaningful it's not going to actually provide any change it's just going to be more noise for the sake of noise um it continues says uh the, the with his remarks again being discussed and condemned rocky granted a long interview to new york hip-hop radio show the breakfast club after saying his remarks had been misquoted and he had been mourning asap yams at the time I had spoken to the magazine he says as follows again i don't like that sort of stuff if you're gonna if you're gonna say controversial things stand on it don't then try and you know um bring up the you know very tragic passing of one of your close friends who was very beloved in the community to try and take the heat off you a little bit that's a little bit lame i don't like that just stand on the courage of your convictions wherever the chips may fall it is what it is and it continues says as follows it says i just get upset and i was really trying to, and i was really trying to say there was like yo i just i just hate when your bandwagon stuff start i agree with him I mean, how come you know Black Lives Matter when the police take them, when a police officer takes it, and it should and and it should be like Black Lives it should matter when a Black Life takes it. You know what I mean? It should always matter. All lives matter, which is another crazy thing to say, right? After saying he doesn't care, <laughs> he, he came out with some mad quotes, right? <laughs> um, I don't want to talk about Ferguson because <laughs> I don't live over there. I live in fucking Soho and Beverly Hills, and then the end of this line saying all lives matter, like <laughs> he's on a mad one. But also, I appreciate I appreciate somebody of his stature, of his you know notoriety coming out and saying these things because at the end. There's some truth to it, especially when you take into context that, if I'm not mistaken, ASAP Rocky's older brother passed away because of gang violence. I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm not mistaken, but if that's the case, and he holds some resentment to the people that his brother was hanging around with and rolling with, who most likely maybe were responsible in some way, shape, or shape, or form for his passing, or maybe with the culture that surrounds the street life where you can't snitch and you can't talk about who killed who because you're going to be ostracized by the community whatever who knows what the reason is but he's definitely got some skin in the game because he's lost a member of his own family to gun violence or to some sort of violence from the streets whatever it may be so i can definitely see where he's coming from in that regard and then the other comment that people were really pissed off about it was supposedly um asap rocky being a colorist no no he cut so he clarified again so this is what i was gonna say he clarified his comments again via this interview that he did with um kerwin frost on his show Kerwin talks which i thought was i still think is really one of the best ones on youtube especially when it comes to interviewing people within my little cultural sphere that i enjoy and i think he speaks quite well about the whole thing and how it basically how his arrest in sweden added to his ability to maybe see where he might have come wrong where he met where his comments might have been interpreted the wrong way in terms of them being not lacking any sort of sympathy or empathy of people's position but it also kind of reinforces the idea that no i'm what i said was right and if you actually want to be about anything change wise you need to do the work you can't just be posturing and just saying stuff for the sake of fake or sake of saying it and you're not doing anything because then that's being fake but most people in this world are fake so you know he has a bit of a conundrum in that regard but this is um asap rocky talking, talking to kerwin frost about what he learned from his experience being in that swedish jail it go to show that you know it can happen to anybody and yeah. you know that whole experience more so than never it kind of just you know had me in jail thinking like am i was i wrong right damn maybe i am wrong damn maybe it is my fault like you be in solitary confinement right, so right, long right. no windows and nothing did you have lights to, to you could have like you could put lights okay, on okay. but at the, it was it was um daytime 
right. 22 hours of the day. Oh, okay. Oh. In Sweden. So it was oh. only night for two hours. So wow. you're depressed. You're seeing yeah, light yeah, all daylight fucking all day. day. All yeah. day, bro. Damn, okay. I hated the life. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could have slept all day. You got to right. really stick it through that shit, yeah. like on some mental institution shit. But basically, motherfuckers is on some shit like making me feel like I'm wrong or, you know, and I didn't want to feel sorry for myself or play a victim or whatever. You weren't wrong. Yeah, you know, I know. And so I'm on the news and then I'm speaking back to people and they like, yo, you know, the states, everybody going crazy, the president, uh, uh, and then you got people on, you know, black Twitter, they brung up some shit that you said and yeah. da, 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 like saying you don't really care about the hood and shit like that, you know, and I, I thought I addressed that before yeah, in the past yeah. and just to be in jail, hearing people still trying to stir up some weird right. shit, then having a nigga, then I'm hearing like, yo, Charlemagne came to your defense. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? The person who would, who would advocate you down. with this. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, 100%. he literally was just like, yo, y'all gotta have a mind of your own sometimes, yeah, and y'all gotta stop yeah. trying to perpetuate whack fake the shit. The cancel culture is out you of get, line. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. But what I will say is though, you know what I'm saying, from, from everything, those old interviews, I used to say shit like, yo, bro, I think that it's inappropriate for me to rap about certain shit that I didn't help with. I felt like when it came to Ferguson, J. Cole went down and he he actually was on the news and he actually helped. He I felt like he deserved to rap about that. Yeah. He deserved to say something about right, that. Right. So when somebody asked me that, you know, I get the the in 2015 I was just like <clears throat> I just feel like personally, if right. I'm in Soho or yeah. I'm here, well, I can't even talk on that. Like that right, ain't right. right. That's inappropriate. Right. That's that's like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. That's that's like appropriating. Yeah. And that's what everybody do. Right. That's like you seeing a homeless person on the on the street whipping your camera out, giving them food. You want it to be genuine. It's when not you're saying it. It's it's just pretentious. It's like you telling your fans to believe in themselves when that's what? not even what you would say, say to your homies. So you get yeah, what I'm no, saying? No. It's just some fake shit just to say. Yeah, just, just to do, say just yeah. cause yep. for the sake yep. of seeming like a certain type of person. Yeah. And the only thing I, I feel like I still I'm still not wrong for that. The only part that I was wrong at was that when in my case, yeah, there was people that never been to Sweden. Yeah. There's people that never been to Harlem. Mm. There's people that don't know ASAP Rocky, mm -hmm. but still was empathetic or sympathetic to my situation yeah, and had true. empathy and could understand and was vocal and yeah. helped my situation. Yeah. So I was wrong, you know, and that, and being in the cell thinking about that, like, you know, like of all things, you know. You as a man, like openly saying that now, yeah. is like a crazy big step. Bro, but I've been saying this for the past four years, yeah. but more so than ever, mm. I experienced something to where mm. the shoe was all the way on yeah. the other foot, you did? Yeah. Like, to where it's just like, yeah, I wasn't wrong for what I said, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you know, I had people misconstruing it, and I had people. You weren't wrong when you said it the first time, it was just like, the way that it, it was, wasn't yeah, explained and, correctly. You know, yeah. But yeah, you get the drift in there. So I think it was perfectly fine what he said. I don't really see anything wrong in it. I think people are overreacting as per usual. Um, again, it's just funny to see in in an event where you're, he's meant to be getting some sort of flowers and praise for maybe maturity and deciding to kind of grow, you know, as a person, start a family. It should be a point when people would be kind of thinking, yeah, man, he's grown up. He's been, you know, he's doing the right thing. One of the horrible parts about being somewhat of, famous is that when you start doing right or start going the right way or start maybe evolving and changing people just can't let go of the things that you did or said in the past and they keep bringing them up again i don't know if that's their way of basically comforting themselves because you know most people are unable to change in any meaningful way let alone a tiny way so maybe when they see you making some effort to evolve they want to keep reminding you that you ain't shit by showing you stuff that you said or repeating the things that you said in an effort for you to snap to then revert back to how you always were and then they can say aha i told you he was a fake maybe that's the thing i don't know if that is but i thought it was really odd rihanna gets pre it, it, it felt like rihanna was pregnant and he was just happened to be along for the ride i saw some people even cropping out him on pictures and stuff thinking people on social media are weird man like i don't know i don't know what people want it's like they want to dictate rihanna who she should date like, I, I don't get it. I think it's all bizarre, but hey, happy for him and happy that he's able to kind of grow somewhat from the whole entire experience. But the last one, I've just commented on that one, though, these comments regarding the colorism thing. That was a mad one when it comes to the girls wearing lipstick. I remember the time when he said it. I got the sentiment, but as a dude, you just can't say these things. It? So just end it at this and then we move on. He said the following. He said, but for real, for me, I feel like, well, this is this is in 2013 too, but this is not a long, long time ago. As you can see, he was very, very young back then. Remember, he used to wear his braids like that back in the day, his head snapped back, right? 
it's about real for me i feel like with the red lipstick thing it all depends on a pair of complexion i'm just being for real you have to be fair skinned to get away with that just like if you were to if you were like fucking for instance what do dark skinned girls have that you know fair skinned girls can't do purple lipsticks no that looks stupid on all girls purple lipstick guys like what the fuck <sighs> yo you know again I've learned my lesson trying to comment on women things. You just can't. You just have to stay out of women's business. He learned his lesson. He's he's now dating or have, about to have a child with a woman who's basically the pinnacle of women's business. She made women's business her business. So I'm sure he'll be all right. I'm sure he'll be completely fine.